Hi, this is Dr. Kimberly Leonard. You're listening to Incredible Life Creator Podcast. My guest today is John Tabor. John Tabor is an expert in using creativity and transformation strategies to help entrepreneurs, leaders, managers, and key decision makers achieve top performance. He was a key manager in medical, aerospace, and electronics companies, and then helped launch Unicom Systems, which three years later was acquired by Rockwell International. He was a speaker for 36 U.S. universities and colleges, plus Fortune 500 companies, government agencies, and nonprofit organizations. John went on to be a founder, co-founder, and CEO of 17 organizations in 11 fields, such as sports health, computer services, software development, wholesale retail sales, entertainment, and lifestyle. He was also a certified hypnotherapist helping high performers with techniques he and his wife Judy pioneered. Judy earlier won a gold medal in synchronized swimming for the U.S. Olympic team. The techniques helped John recover from disabling strokes and Crohn's disease. He shares his recovery story with stroke survivors through Healings in Motion based in Stockton, California and on talk radio shows. Today, John is CEO of Pure Being, a health and wellness company with an international list of clientele. He is also managing partner of DRA Family Office and chairman of BG Acquisitions. John is also a business advisor to medical senior care organizations, in addition to coaching people to achieve a more fulfilling personal and business life. Altogether, John has helped over 5,000 people achieve their dreams. John is the author of Child's Play, plus co-author of the Amazon bestseller, Breaking Barriers, Decisions That Elevate People from Ordinary to Extraordinary. Two additional books by John are forthcoming before the end of 2021. Welcome to the podcast, John. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate being here. Yes, and you have had a long history of many pivots in your life and changes and um it, it sounds like you've done some really really fun things and some really meaningful things so why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about you and how you started out and how you got into doing all these things okay fine um yeah at my early history as a child was a, a little bit uh, screwed up my first six years i really don't remember the first thing i really became aware of is that i flunked out of kindergarten and then i flunked out of first grade so my mother took it upon herself to become my uh, mentor, teacher, counselor, and all of the things uh, for a couple of years until I could get basic uh, skills. And then from there, I kind of screwed off in school and uh, didn't do much uh, useful. But my grades were terrible. Um, I, uh, I wanted to be a doctor. But uh, my grades suck so bad, there was no way I could qualify <laughs> to get into medical school. Um, I went on to uh, college, um, more or less because I had to, it was what all my friends were doing. And then I started to wise up and uh, I focused on becoming a business consultant. Uh, even though I didn't have all the credentials, I didn't have all the necessary background, I chose to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. and uh, successfully transferred out uh, at the end of the uh, uh, senior year in college and uh, actually went to work, work for a hospital. I was personnel director mm -hmm. and then went from there to uh, various aerospace and electronic companies and similar kinds of roles. And then one day I was working at a company, uh, Unicom System, and we uh, were under the gun for a number of things. And we were being looked at by Rockwell International as a potential uh, acquisition. And uh, I made a couple of uh, stupid comments at the wrong time and got fired. <laughs> and <laughs> so at that point, it was time to transition into something else. So my wife and I uh, decided to uh, start our own businesses. And again, we had no background in this. Uh, we just uh, jumped in. And then we proceeded to uh, develop a number of very successful ventures. And uh, they've taken me through a number of different uh, 
industries and uh, types of companies. Uh, I spent uh, several years on the road putting on seminars and workshops for these colleges and universities. And, uh, you know, it was a great learning experience. And I got to see most of the United States. And, uh, you know, it was one of those things where I just went off to each assignment uh, with my briefcase and a hope and a prayer that I could do this. And <laughs> I managed to pull it off. And uh, to me, it was a little surprising at times. Mm -hmm. But it gave me the background necessary then to uh, really go out and do a good job in starting companies and running them. And uh, it gives me the opportunity to today uh, be in a position where I can assist people in a variety of ways. And uh, I used uh, my 17 years as a hypnotherapist uh, on a part-time basis uh, to help people make a, a whole series of improvements in their life or to uh, get them out of a hard situation that they were in. Mm -hmm. And so I developed uh, some processes that would enable that to happen more quickly. Uh, Judy came up with uh, all kinds of interesting ideas uh, pictorially so that we could talk about what we were doing with pictures. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that was all very good. And uh, now today I'm and a CEO, co-founder of a, uh, a company in the health industry. And as you mentioned, I, I am uh, responsible for acquisition of companies in the healthcare industry. And I'm also a general partner in a uh, family office, which was something I didn't know about until a few, few years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's a very interesting assignment too. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Beautiful. Well, thank you for sharing. And, you know, one of the questions I had is, you know, we had just met each other not that long ago through an introduction. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you had sent me some of your bio and some of your things that you're working on. And one of my questions, just a personal question was, how do you find and meet that perfect person who's going to be your um, wife or husband in life? Because it sounds like you just were in sync with your wife and you even were able to work together in business. How does that happen? How do, how do we do that? Okay. And, and, you know, I've been fortunate to have had this happen twice now. And uh, my first uh, marriage was to uh, Judy. Her last name was McFadden at the time. Uh, she was 15 and I was 17 going on 18. And I uh, was invited to a, a Halloween type party and uh, I met her there. And then I uh, really was enchanted by her, but I was scared to death to do anything about it. And uh, after a month of me doing nothing about it, she finally called me and said, are we going to ever get together? And so, yeah, that's how we started. And uh, I've also been extremely fortunate to have found my second wife after Judy died. And uh, today, uh, Nancy is uh, teaching me all kinds of things that I didn't know before, like how to be a cruise person. You know, I've, I've never been on an ocean liner before. We've made a number of cruises and uh, been to Mexico and various other uh, places. And, you know, I'd done it a lot of travel in my earlier years, but. Uh, She's introduced me to all kinds of interesting things. And she's extremely smart and knows a, a ton of stuff that every once in a while, I'm absolutely astounded by what she can know and do. And uh, so I, I'd like to say I'm extremely fortunate. Mm -hmm. And I met uh, Nancy, in case anyone wants to know, through a, uh, a, a matchmaking service. So uh, yeah, those things do work. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So part of that, finding that person and actually sticking together through everything is learning from each other? Yeah, in, in fact, uh, I would say that uh, in, in, in the case of Judy in particular, she was uh, extremely knowledgeable of things, uh, let's call it at a psychic level. Mm -hmm. She had information that I never could uh, grasp. She could have a dream and uh, relate that dream and uh, some of the poetry that she would write or short stories that she would uh, 
concoct. And uh, she came down with information, which was astounding. That the most, to me, the most interesting thing she did was uh, one day she sat down at the computer and banged out in about a 10 minute period, a very complete description of how creativity works. And I've had it checked by <laughs> scientists and they say, wow, you know, you know, tell me about this person. What kind of background do they have? Uh, you know, uh, what university did, did they go to and so on? And I said, this was a lady who had gone through two years of uh, junior college and that was it. Mm -hmm. But she had the ability to tap into it. And uh, so it was a challenge for me because I was always scrambling to stay up with her. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, same thing to some degree with Nancy. So, you know, she's uh, challenged me with things and I've had to uh, clean up my act a bit. And, mm -hmm. you know, she's an excellent cook. I'm a terrible provider of cookware <laughs> and things like that. But uh, fortunately, uh, Nancy takes care of that for me. That is beautiful. So when I look at all the things you've done, I'm sure people are asking, well, what is the secret to success? You know, it's uh, an interesting uh, thing to, to live through. Uh, I think it all begins with uh, knowing who you are, you know, to having some awareness of uh, your strengths, your weaknesses, the opportunities that uh, provided to you, and the threats that you have to uh, address along the way. And you also have to have a very broad uh, uh, scope of what life is about and just keep looking for more answers. Uh, I spend probably two to three hours a day digging around, finding out what's going on, expanding my awareness of things. Uh, uh, myself and several other persons, are, we consider ourselves to be experts in the uh, field of the secret space program that the US and various other countries are pursuing outside of the general public's knowledge. Uh, and so I do, quite a bit of research and uh, being aware of that. And then uh, I have other interests. I still pursue uh, finding ways to enable people to make transition easily, uh, not death transition, but just mm -hmm. improving your life and uh, uh, doing whatever it takes to make themselves happy. The second thing you have to do is uh, have a very positive attitude about life. You know, I've been kicked in the teeth a few times and, you know, I pick myself up and keep going. I can tell you that uh, having lived through a couple of strokes and uh, having been severely disabled by that, uh, you know, that's a real eye opener, so to speak. And uh, then at the same time, I had Crohn's disease. And so I was uh, in bad shape. I was on medication a lot. And one day I said, this has got to stop. I, I know enough about how the mind works and I'm gonna switch this. And I, I came up with a program that in fact uh, I use for, with other people on a regular basis now. And within with six months, I was totally uh, recovering from the strokes. Within another couple of months, Crohn's disease disappeared, has not re reappeared for 12 years. And uh, I don't expect like to, I'll ever it's see it again. It's even hard to believe. I'm sure yeah. a lot of people are listening, thinking, really? You know, I've had this, these things have been happening and I haven't been able to move out of it. Well, it can be done, I can assure you. And then I teach those uh, skills to other people. And uh, like you mentioned in the uh, bio, I do work with a group out of Stockton. California here, and I, I help other persons who have gone through strokes recover in very, very rapid time. And uh, part of this group are uh, physicians and nurses, uh, technicians, and, and other persons who uh, I can work with, who I share information with, and they have shown that the things I know and do really do work. And uh, so it's, it's really, uh, quite uh, uplifting, let's just say. Wonderful. Now, the third thing you have to do in order to be a good success is have clear intentions. Mm -hmm. You really have to clearly understand what it is you want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And part of that is visualizing. I'm a big one for that. 
Um, in fact, I think that was probably the one tool I had when I was a kid that was very uh, helpful to me to recover from being a crappy student. Uh, I could visualize so solutions. I could visualize uh, ways of dealing with things. Um, and then I've come to find out some years later that one of my skills is the ability to take a very complex situation and break it down into a very simple situation or a method. And so I use those kinds of approaches to solve business problems or help people. In fact, I use that kind of uh, method uh, with uh, hypnosis to help people recover from all kinds of life-threatening situations and uh, helping them uh, achieve better grades in school and doing all the things that I never was successful with. Uh, the fourth thing is being aware that you are going to be successful. You have to, in fact, you have to know right away that you're going to be successful and drive yourself toward it. Um, and even if you get sidetracked, and if you uh, end up uh, in a, a terrible situation of one type or another, know that you can recover from it. I've been through bankruptcy twice because of business failures. They were not my fault, but hey, I was the victim. And you know, I pick up myself up at each uh, juncture and I went charging ahead. And obviously it didn't hold me back any uh, doing what I do today. You know, no matter what you, failures you've had along the way, you can always recover from it. So yeah, I've re recovered from illness and uh, you know, financial uh, blowouts and it doesn't matter, keep going. Uh, the next thing that's really important is uh, allowing things to happen for you. Um, one of the habits that a lot of people have is driving themselves and everybody else crazy by resisting. You just have to get out of your own way. Uh, if, you, if you look around at the people who are generally unsuccessful in life, it's because they set their own traps. They did something that would uh, take them off their path or cause them to uh, make silly decisions, such as what I did back in the early days. And uh, when I got myself fired, you know, I would never repeat, repeat something like that today, mm -hmm. but it was a matter of resistance that caused me to do it. And I didn't realize it until later. The next thing that you have to do is have the right thinking and the actions. Um, you have to be willing to upgrade yourself on a continuing basis. And that means um, staying away from television a lot, using your, your computer or various other tools to uh, uh, learn more quickly, more easily, and so on. Um, and uh, take the right actions. You have an options listed as a mile long, and you just have to uh, be willing to step up and, and do it. And finally, feeling good about it. That's really what drives you. That's what drives me is I feel good about it. Uh, you know, and regardless of whatever's happening, I have a positive outlook on life. And uh, as far as I am concerned, I, I think that's probably the most important of all those seven. Yeah, and when you said that, what, re, what it reminded me of is um, when I'm making decisions. So when I make decisions, I look and see what information I have available. And if it's enough information that I, I feel good about it, I make a decision. I, I just try and make decisions quickly. Yes. And I, fact, and I feel good. I'm going to feel good about it, even if I, I might be wrong, but I still try to feel good about it. And, yeah. uh, you know, and if I find it's the wrong decision, then I just gather the information and I make the best decision. And I'm going to feel good about it until I don't. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> exactly. Not right. Yeah. If they sit on it too long, um, it's going to be like a bad egg. You know, it's going to get <laughs> really awful. But if you can uh, very quickly move and make a decision. You can always recover quickly too. Um, and so, yeah, great, great suggestion. Mm -hmm. yeah, just make a new decision. Yeah. Okay, so those are the seven major steps to success. And then I, another item that I really think is important is knowing your desires and feelings. Um, I think it all starts with having a purpose. 
uh, you know, we're here as human beings on this planet for a short period of time, relatively. And uh, we need to figure out why, you know, what, why were we born? What are we supposed to be doing? Uh, how can I contribute to the human race? How can I be a humanitarian? How can I uh, do things that are going to assist in mankind moving ahead without destroying itself? <laughs> it's, you know, we, we tend to do things that uh, at a time are, are the wrong thing. But if you have the right purpose, at least you're, you have a good pathway to start on. Then I think you have to be very trusting. You know, I look around at uh, what I've accomplished in life and I've taken uh, suggestions and counsel and directions from a lot of people. And I try to be a good listener and then I put to action what they've taught me. Sometimes I have to toss it out because it doesn't fit my particular situation. But uh, generally, I'm very trusting of others. And uh, yeah, a few times I've been burned, but I don't worry about it. I just you know, pick up the pieces and charge ahead again. The next thing I think is important is you have clarity. It goes back to your visualizations. Uh, one of the most important things you can do is to learn how to visualize successfully. Now, you have to deal with the fact that uh, some people cannot visualize. One of the things I learned with the NLP, uh, Neuro Linguistic Programming, is that, uh, yeah, in the United States in particular, about 65% of our population is visually oriented. About uh, 20 some odd percent are auditory, or they listen with their ears and they do all their thinking through their ears. And the rest of them are kinesthetic or feeling oriented. And so some people can visualize wonderfully and do all kinds of things. And then, then you have the auditory types who, if you try to get them to paint a picture about something, they sit there and stare at you. They have no concept of what you're talking about. They cannot do it, but they, they can put together a, a, a song they can talk, they can do all kinds of things. And they tend to be uh, very linear in their thinking. The visualizer can take things and scatter them all around, put them all into order. That's how I do it. I have everything around me within my aura. But uh, then you've got the, the kinesthetic types, who are the feeling types. And you know them right away because if you're in a conversation with them, they'll tend to go to sleep on you, they'll, you know, do this. And you'll think, oh my God, what did I just say? Uh, did I do something wrong? And no, you didn't. They're processing what you just said, or they're regurgitating their feelings and dealing with them. And, uh, you know, if you don't understand that, your communication skills are going to be really in bad shape. So clarity is really important. You have to be understanding how people use different thinking processes and they do it in a certain order. And as long as you're willing to understand that, you, you can do better. Mm -hmm. The next thing, and probably the most important one on the list, but uh, not the one I'm saying first, is love. You know, you really have to be willing to love others. You have to uh, be, be willing to uh, accommodate them and uh, deal with whatever their limitations are. And even your enemies that you might encounter along the way, uh, when push comes to shove, you really have to find a way to say it's okay. And uh, I believe that uh, love is probably the universal thing that affects all humans in particular. Um, we are cat people in this house and uh, so, you know, we've got this trapeze thing in be behind me there. A uh, couple of cats, I've had uh, dogs, I've had uh, all kinds of other animals. Used to raise Arabian show horses and, and take them around the country. Uh, I was a terrible writer, but I sure knew how to do stand-up work. Um, and, you know, I've had all kinds of other things in my life and I'm very blessed with that. And so I try to, I uh, think that the m most important thing after love is joy. You know, be joyful about what's going on, even if you don't like it. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean that you should fake it, but you learn how to 
consider everything to be success oriented. And even if it's not, find a way, be joyful. Even if the fact you're breathing, you're not <laughs> accomplishing much of other else, but you're breathing, you're, you're here, uh, you're, you're still connected to uh, the sources. And, and I think that's important. Another is to understand the power that you have. Uh, as humans, um, we have extraordinary capabilities. Uh, one of the things that was always a mind blower to me and to Judy, bless, bless for Nancy, is uh, when we got mad about something or upset, uh, we would blow out light bulbs. We, you know, <laughs> have light bulbs going on in the kitchen or whatever. And then as soon as I had this nasty thought, and, <laughs> you know, swear at it or whatever the damn light bulb would blow up <laughs> and uh, judy's yeah judy used to break her watches and do all kinds of things turns out that we were <laughs> our energies were so powerful especially in the early years uh, that and we hadn't controlled them uh, we could uh, cause all kinds of havoc around us so uh, you know I, i've also noticed that if um, if i happen to be in a bad mood for something uh, the car doesn't work right, uh, <laughs> whatever. I had to be really careful when I was younger. I uh, went out and got a pilot's license. So, you know, I, I, I was there uh, out, out uh, flying airplanes around and I had to be sure that I was thinking correctly. So I wouldn't end up being a casualty mm -hmm. or causing trouble for other people. But anyway, uh, you know, we have, have an, an enormous power. Uh, one of the things I learned along the way uh, through hypnotherapy and other things is using energy healing, uh, assisting people uh, through you know, my hands or thought processes. I can assist them even thousands of miles away uh, by uh, certain processes that I've worked out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always thought that was uh, really astounding to uh, dramatically affect the life of a person in a very positive way, uh, even though you're not in front of them. Maybe we were just talking on the phone and I would visualize uh, a solution to a problem uh, that they were having or uh, to a medical issue that they were dealing with and within seconds, it was solved. And uh, to me, that's always been quite a, mi a mysterious and wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. And the last part is uh, prosperity. You know, I think that uh, we in this country in particular sure are really blessed we have so many opportunities coming to us. Uh, we have an ability to live a, a very fine life, even if we're not rich. Richness is relative anyway. Uh, I've made a lot of money. I've lost a lot of money. I always come back in a very positive way. You know, today I'm running companies uh, on a very successful level and um, money is not an issue. We can always go out and raise money and uh, we do. And so, you know, as far as I'm concerned, prosperity is one of those things that keeps the, the machine going. It's, it's what lubricates it and keeps other people happy too, if you pay them extremely well. So that's one of the things I like to do. Great. Wow, you've given us a lot already here. So um, what are some of the processes you use when you're working with people to help them have that transformation? Okay, well, one of the things that uh, Judy and I came up with is a little uh, pictorial, if you will, and refer, we refer to this as the uh, reality transformer. And let me back it up a little bit so you can see it. Mm -hmm. And what we have here is a wheel with 12 segments to it. You have violet at the top, we have red at the bottom, and then we have rainbow colors running around it. And you'll notice that there there are numbers within uh, each of those segments. And then there are words around it. And what we are doing with this is we are engaging various frequencies to make things happen. Now we do it through words and we do it through uh, ways of thinking. And this is one of the most powerful things I share with people is the uh, fact that uh, you can alter your thinking dramatically by working with colors. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it may sound crazy, but for example, if you want to deal with uh, issues of your higher self, wisdom, 
uh, the spirit world and so on. And you think about it in terms of the color violet. And when you do that, you will find yourself engaging with the part of yourself that will be connected to uh, our source, God, uh, whatever term you want to give to it, but it enables you to really quickly connect. Then when you want to deal with your self-concepts, your intuition, your psyche, uh, the color indigo is a, a device to enable you to do that. So imagine surrounding yourself with indigo color, and then you can more quickly access th those parts of yourself, which I consider to be uh, at the deep uh, level of our mind and uh, our brain. The next is uh, if you want to have active thoughts, inspirational thoughts, a lot of creativity, use light blue. Consider yourself to be surrounded by light blue and you'll link up to uh, answers so quickly, it's, it's really astounding. If you happen to do that with red, uh-uh, nowhere black, you're gonna, it, it's gonna shut you down. Go to light blue. Next uh, is uh, green. Now green's a healing color. And if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're hurting a lot, uh, where you need to get back in balance or you are dealing with issues that you find to be difficult, then think about being surrounded by green. And it's also a good color to put your mind in the order. Uh, one of the things that us visual types uh, tend to do is we scatter thoughts around us. And if we want to put it, put it into a sense of order, we use green. Mm -hmm. Then the next color that's important is yellow. And here you're dealing with your feelings, your uh, senses, your perceptions. And uh, when you're doing that, then you're engaging a part of yourself where it is uh, uh, dealing with your physical aspects. And then the, the color orange gives you access to your power centers, to your basic energy and to your strength. Mm -hmm. So if you want to accomplish something uh, that takes a lot of strength, consider yourself to be covered or surrounded by orange. Mm -hmm. And it's really magical how it works. I couldn't believe it the first time I, I tried it out and I uh, thought, so, wow, mm -hmm. I've got to pay more attention to colors and how this is all done. And then finally, uh, the color red is part of what forms us. Uh, red is a color of a foundation of things. It's a uh, part of our substances, of our world, and it's what really makes things happen. Now, going back to this for just a minute, we have four segments here. The bottom segment deals with, uh, let's make it sure I got it right here, that uh, deals with uh, what's going on in our world today. Mm -hmm. This segment over here is where you review what's happened before. So you go from here up this way, you review what happened before, then you go up to this area here and you go through a transformation. And then you come down to the other side and you were influencing what's going to happen. So it's a, it's a wheel and it's, believe it or not, you're doing this within milliseconds most of the time. But if you ever want to figure out how to do a better job, then break it down like I did into something like this. And in the book, uh, uh, Child's Play, I have uh, one of these wheels and I describe within it uh, how it works. And uh, by the way, for anyone in your audience who would like to uh, uh, have a copy of the book Child's Play, I'll give it to you as a, a PDF. And uh, it contains material that Judy wrote as well as uh, things I've done. And I'll be happy to provide that to you, no cost. It's a gift from me to you to hopefully you'll find a way to use it. Uh, you can uh, request a copy by sending an email to me my email address is jon at j-o-n-t-a-b-e-r dot com and uh, ask for a copy of the child's play and I'll, I'll get it out to you. Okay. Now, this particular device, mm -hmm. believe it or not, has saved a lot of lives. This is the process I use to help people recover. And uh, I worked it out uh, 
in a, a series of different events. I had all kinds of interesting uh, help with this. I don't know if your listeners believe much in the uh, psychic world, but I can tell you that some of the most uh, important persons in my life have been individuals with psychic capabilities and special skills that I didn't possess. And they were able to teach me things that uh, I now use on a regular basis almost every day. And uh, I have to tell you that uh, the first time that I ran into this was in 1972. I was uh, putting on a seminar up in Washington in Seattle. And one of the persons who attended the seminar uh, came up to me at the coffee break time and said, uh, John, uh, you know, there's somebody who lives in this area who you used to work with and uh, they want to reach out to you because they have some information that you need for what you're going to be doing with your life in the future. You know, and I'm just kind of, well, well you're, are you sure about this? <laughs> and uh, so she reached in her purse and she pulled out this uh, document that I had signed several years earlier. And it was a pay raise for this other person. And she said, does that show you that I'm not kidding? Well, that person then introduced me to her roommates and uh, uh, spouse. And it turns out that this individual was quite a psychic and could do all kinds of interest in readings and her accuracy level was in the 99% range. And so she could uh, give me advice on events, uh, ways of doing things and, and so on. And to this day, I'm forever grateful. And, uh, you know, it was, I think it was bound to happen. I, I don't know how, I never bothered to ask. All I know is that everything came together at the right moment. And uh, all the information I ever needed was always at my disposal. So anyway, I think that's important. Yeah, yeah. And when I'm thinking about that, Will, as you're going around it, so mm -hmm. you said you're going around it actually quite quickly. So it's not like yes. you're going into the past and sitting there and thinking about it. You're just going in, kind of grabbing something and keep going. Yeah, generally that's the way it should work. Mm -hmm. However, there are times in your life when uh, you, did, you need to stop and think and really break things down into their components or um, better understand the process. And that's when uh, a pictorial like this is very effective because it will cause you to stop and think. Mm -hmm. Now, actually, this is only one of 22 different wheels. Oh. And uh, there are, and each of those wheels is geared to different roles that we play in life. Now, we've got one for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have one for those of us who are uh, living with others, uh, couples in particular. Then I have one for general groups. I have one for employers. I have uh, a decision-making one. I have uh, two others. And then I have, if you're a leader and manager of people, I have uh, a whole series of uh, different wheels dealing with leadership and management uh, issues and uh, the kinds of things that you have to consider when you're running a company, uh, making decisions that affect other people and so on. And believe it or not, they're all based on the colors. Mm -hmm. And people who have used this stuff are astounded with how effective it is. Mm -hmm. And another thing that's really interesting is uh, when I put it out on a chart and I show the connections from one to the other by color, everything makes sense. And for example, uh, yes, for ourselves, uh, we wanna deal with uh, our higher self, our spirit world, um, the, uh, if you will, the wisdom. Well, that can be linked up with purpose. That can be linked up with other things of the same nature. And so I've got the system that is, it enables you to very quickly learn how to solve problems. And, uh, you know, no matter how complex it is, um, it'll work. And I spent, uh, you know, the last uh, 20 some odd years developing this. And at first, uh, Judy and I came up with these eight uh, uh, systems. And then later, 
uh, unfortunately, it was after Judy died, then I started to add to it. And uh, so today there are 22 segments to it. And I use it to solve really serious business issues or to put together uh, plans for promotion and uh, sale of products and so on. And uh, color is a big deal. And here's the other thing. Uh, Nikola Tesla and others have talked about the fact that our world is based on three things, energy, vibration, frequency. That's all there is. And yet combinations of those three things create everything in our world. And so when you begin to understand that frequency is such a uh, major component of it all, you start to all, you know, you really start to pay attention to things. I have a chart here I want to show you real quick that uh, deals with words that people use and the matter of thinking. Have you seen this chart before? Well, yeah, you showed me that chart. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, this is a chart that deals with the fact that certain words have frequency or impact. Now, for example, words dealing with uh, things that are not so much fun, like uh, shame, guilt, uh, apathy, grief, they're very low energy. They're down in this segment here. Things which are of a much higher frequency are up in this range here. And uh, for example, love is about here. Mm -hmm. And the, this deals with the types of energy that you surround yourself with. And so if you're thinking positive thoughts, if you are dealing with uh, positive uh, actions, then your life is gonna get a lot better because the energy around you, the frequencies that you're dealing with will enable you to accomplish whatever you want very quickly. If you're messing around with, uh, you know, feeling like, um, oh, you're gonna blame somebody because they did something nasty. Well, you're gonna drive the situation down. You're gonna cause further grief. You're not gonna get out of the situation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And we've talked a lot about uh, visualization and frequencies and um, what about our words? What about the people who are auditory? What about, how, are, how do we use our words? Well, <clears throat> excuse me, the same thing uh, has to take place. First of all, your words have to be purposeful. You just can't be rambling around and, you know, circling <laughs> with the subject without uh, having a, 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 a target, if you will. Uh, next up, you, your words have to imply trust. Uh, one of the things that you will turn people off with is if you imply by any manner that you don't trust them, you will kill the conversation instantly. Uh, the words have to be very clear. Again, this goes back to the word clarity. Uh, your words cannot be uh, fuzzy thoughts. They can't be uh, words which are vague in nature. You have to be very specific. Uh, your words should convey appreciation for others, I think. And even if you don't like somebody, find something positive about it, you know. Uh, you, you will do so much better for whatever conversation you're going to have. Uh, then, you know, be joyful in your deliveries. Don't just sit there and sulk and complain and bitch and moan. You know, you really have to have uh, a positive view of life and and pursue it that way. And I think you have to understand that words are really powerful. And if you're not being careful, you can put a person into extreme depression rapidly by using the wrong words or accusing them of something that is ill-founded. I think it's really important that you allow people to blossom and grow and to uh, you know, really show off what they can do. You know, we like to show off. It's just human nature. So let them do it. You know, find a way to let them uh, blossom and, and grow. And, and it always works better. And that goes back to also the prosper prosperity. I always look for situations where a person uh, can benefit. And so 
the words I use, the, the methodologies I employ, uh, I want to make their life better. Mm -hmm. And if I can't do that, then probably I need to be doing something else. Or maybe that uh, conversation's not gonna go anywhere, or perhaps I'm with the wrong person. Uh, you know, I'm sure you have multiple situations where you walked into a room and you instantly took a liking to somebody, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And you've also walked into a room and you, so oh, I don't like that one over there. <laughs> yeah. You don't know why. <laughs> right. It turns out that you're incompatible energy-wise. Your, your frequencies are not matched. But whereas uh, somebody who you uh, really get close to quickly and you tend to uh, uh, appreciate them, their frequency is very much to yours and uh, their personal power is one that you really like. Mm -hmm. you know, so you know, we have this uh, energy field that surrounds us uh, that goes by a variety of words, but uh, the aura is the one that most people know. Um, when your energy is up, when you're in a good mood, normally the aura will extend out to four to six or maybe even eight feet. And when you're in really high spirits, it may go out to 12 feet. But if you're in a really crappy mood, you're bitching and moaning about something, this aura shrinks down. And some people who are really good at uh, reading energy will tell you that uh, the aura looks brown, black, dingy uh, if you're in a, a bad mood and it also shows up in your energy centers oh and by the way this little wheel mm -hmm. it's around this is built around your energy centers too mm -hmm. we generally agree that there are seven energy centers in our body it starts uh, essentially uh, with your feet and legs and uh, then you move up to the groin area for then we move into the uh, abdomen. This is our heart. This is our throat. This is our third eye right here. And this is the top portion of our head and the connection we have to source, God, or whatever you, terms you want to use. So when we put this together, again, we took a very complex situation or a way of relating to the world, we try to make it simple. Mm -hmm. And that we've done, I think, with this uh, little wheel. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about, you know, just walking into a room, like you said, and there's different people at different um, energetic levels. Um, when we walk into that room and we're attracted to this one, um, how do we choose who we really want to go and talk to? Do we always just want to choose the person that is in sync with where we're at? Or do we want to find so. that person and talk to this person and see if we can bring them up the scale? That's what I do. I, yes, I'm, I'm attracted to certain persons and I may begin a conversation with them. However, I will begin to go over to persons who are not at my frequency level or uh, my interest level because I want to know more about them. I, I want to try to uh, work out a connection and hopefully it's gonna be positive. Uh, sometimes uh, you can't do it no matter what. And so you just have to back away and go do something else. But uh, I've always taken on as a challenge to uh, break through the, the ice that some people have around them and uh, you know to relate to it. And when I was out uh, doing all these uh, seminars and workshops and stuff, and things um, that's what I had to do as an instructor is uh, you know I have a group of 40 50 sometimes uh, 100 people in the audience that I had to work with and so I tried to reach everybody of course it's not possible mm -hmm. and I was an idealist when I first started I used to think that I had to get to everybody and then I, <laughs> but it wouldn't happen I used to get so depressed for a day or so and I think oh god I got it I've got to learn something better and blah, blah, blah. Eventually it came to me that you can't get to everybody. Mm -hmm. And when I stopped doing that, I got happier. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, I, I do think that uh, part of life is uh, reaching out and uh, learning how to deal with persons who are not thinking like you do, mm -hmm. whose background is different, uh, whose uh, methods, whose actions are different. 
but it's all part of us understanding who we are and you know why we're here. What what is our purpose? How can I do better? Beautiful. Well, you have really taught us so much during this time we've been together. So thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to speak to your audience and. You know, I, I really enjoy doing these kinds of things because uh, working with these kinds of tools and then applying them in a business setting, also in social settings, is to me very satisfying. And uh, uh, I want to give, give you a little secret. Uh, several years ago, I started having dreams about uh, what I have to do with the rest of my life. And one of the first things that came to me is that over the next 20 some odd years, I am, I'm going to affect the lives of over 500 million people in a very positive way. And I started to think, oh my God, what am I gonna to have to do? I don't know that many people. Mm -hmm. Well, suddenly things started to open up and all of a sudden these uh, different business situations uh, are taking on new power and the fact that I'm putting together a company that will have uh, hundreds of locations for, to help people get toxins out of their body, uh, I'm going to attract uh, millions of people that way. And then I've, I've got other things. I've done a lot of video. I've done a lot of television, uh, various other stuff. And so when I start adding it up, uh, yeah, I think it's possible. I'll hit that number. That's exciting. Uh, but, you know, that's what drives me. You know, that's part of my purpose. I, I've got to affect people in a very positive way. I've got this thing driving me constantly. You know, I've got this number out there, 500 million. Ah, but I'm going to do it. And, uh, you know, don't doubt me. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. <sighs> so if I don't mean to be a, I don't mean to be a smart ass, but that's, that's how I operate. You know, mm -hmm. I, I set these huge goals and I go out there and, and go for them that's awesome so um if people wanted to connect with you is your email that you gave earlier the best way or do you want to want to share with yes. us um any websites or anything um else yeah you can find me on linkedin uh, I, there's background information about some of the things i've done in business um not a not the entire group but at least that'll give you a connection. I'm on Facebook. I have to tell you, I'm not posting anything for a year. I've got to get back to doing that. I used to be rather prolific and uh, put all kinds of stuff up. And then I got distracted by my other activities. So I'm going to have to do that again. Uh, but other than that, uh, if you do a, a word search on me in uh, Google search or uh, DuckDuckGo or some of the other search tools, you'll find my name popping up. Uh, associated with a variety of websites and uh, activities. Um, so you, you can find me, but uh, the email is the best way to get a hold of me quickly. All right, thank you. So just You're going welcome. to a personal question. Sure. What gives you the most happiness and fulfillment in your life? Um, doing these kind of things, really. Um, I enjoyed doing it from the first time I ever did something like this. I was uh, in the sixth grade. I was given the opportunity to do a speech in front of uh, 400 some odd kids in a school I was in. And um, I was given this assignment to uh, talk about something that was important to me. And at the time I put it, I was uh, in the Explorer Scouts, part of the Boy Scouts. And I took my uniform in and I, gave you this really rousing speech and everybody liked it. And I thought, wow, this is amazing because I was one of the world's worst students. You know, here, here I was damn near failing and everything else I was doing, but I could do a speech and do very well at it. And uh, so that became to me really important. And so I began doing it on a regular basis. And, you know, I was asked on a, a number of occasions to, uh, do speeches. And another one that was a big deal for me is I was in a science class in the eighth grade and I happen to like science. So I paid attention once in a while. And the uh, instructor asked me to uh, do a, a, a whole class period 
on something that I thought was interesting. And I thought that television is interesting. So I put together a one hour presentation for the other students on how television works. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, it was really well done. <laughs> Even to this day, I'm, I'm blown away by what it is I managed to do. And when I found out uh, what an impact I had made on the, the class, mm -hmm. I thought, I got to do this again. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's become one of the things I do. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast today and for everything oh, I, you shared. Thank you very much for the uh, invitation. And uh, I'll look forward to uh, continuing to uh, be in contact with you and helping in any way I can. Thank you. So I have one last question before we finish. Sure. What is your best advice on living an incredible, amazing life? Never, ever give up. Never, never, never. I don't care how bad it gets, never give up. Now, you might take a successful and purposeful retreat once in a while in the, in the thick of a battle, but never, ever give up. You'll die. Don't do it. Just keep going as long as you can and keep thinking positive thoughts. You know, yeah, the world is sometimes all crazy and people do stupid things to one another and are sometimes very cruel, but have positive thoughts anyway. Uh, you know, we come into this life with nothing. We're going to go out with nothing except for the feelings. And by the way, this is a kind of an interesting thing. Um, we don't remember much going from one life to another in a way of rational thought. However, we do remember everything having to do with emotion. And it, it, it's, it tags onto each of the lives that we have, not only in this dimension, but other dimensions in which we may participate. And it's always the emotions. It's always the caring for the love and so on. But rational thought, yeah, forget about it. You can always reboot it at another time. So that was one of the things I learned a long time ago. And I, I try to instill it in other people to, to you know, really pay attention to your emotions and how you express them, because that's going to go on forever. It's, it's part of your soul, it's part of your spirit. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, John. My and pleasure. Talk to you again soon. Okay.